ever just, you know, stop and wonder if the earth itself has a kind of pulse, like a natural rhythm. It sounds a bit out there, maybe? Yeah, maybe a little sci-fi. But it turns out our planet actually does hum with these uh, electromagnetic signals. It really does. Welcome to the deep dive. Today we're tuning into something pretty fascinating. Schumann resonances. That's right. Think of it like Earth's own very faint, uh, extremely low frequency broadcast signal. Mm. It's always there. Always there. Mm -hmm. These Schumann resonances, or SR sometimes, they're essentially peaks, little spikes of energy in the Earth's electromagnetic field. Okay. Specifically, we're talking really low frequencies down in the like 3 to 60 hertz range, mm -hmm. way, way below your standard radio wave. Okay, 3 to 60 hertz. And what's generating this planetary hum? Is it like deep underground or something? Uh, not quite geological. It's mostly lightning, actually. Lightning, really? Yeah, globally, you've got something like uh, 50 lightning strikes happening every single second. 50 per second, wow. And each one of those strikes, it acts like a huge natural antenna, sending out electromagnetic energy. Okay. Now, you've got the Earth's surface, which conducts electricity, well, right? Right. And then way up high, you have the ionosphere, another conductive layer. The space between them acts like a like a cavity or a waveguide. So like the space between the skins of a drum. That's a great analogy. Or like blowing over a bottle, you get a specific note. Yeah, only certain frequencies ring out. Exactly. So lightning throws out all sorts of frequencies, but only certain ones, the ones whose wavelengths kind of fit perfectly between the Earth and ionosphere, get trapped and amplified. They bounce back and forth. And they resonate. They resonate, creating these stable, planet-wide standing waves. Those are the Schumann resonances. Okay, that makes sense. It's like the planet's natural tuning fork struck by lightning. This wasn't just discovered yesterday, though, right? Someone figured this out, theoretically. You're right. It's named after Winfried Otto Schumann, a physicist. Yeah. He predicted them mathematically back in uh, 1952. Sure, man. Got it. Although it's worth mentioning, George Fitzgerald, he actually suggested something similar way earlier, like 1893. Wow, 1893. Yeah, based on the idea that the upper atmosphere might be conductive. Right. Some people argue we should call them Schumann Fitzgerald resonances, you know, to give him credit to. Interesting how science builds like that. But predicting them is one thing. Actually finding them must have been tough. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, the idea of that conductive layer, the ionosphere, was kicked around by Heaviside and Kennelly around 1902 to explain radio waves traveling far. Right. But getting proof that took Appleton and Barnett in the 1920s, and even after Schumann's math in 52, detecting these incredibly faint signals, that took until the early 1960s. Balzer and Wagner, they really developed the sensitive kit needed. So it took a while to filter out the noise, basically. A huge amount of noise, yeah. These signals are tiny. And it's not just one frequency, is it? There's like a fundamental and then others. Exactly. The main one, the fundamental, is usually around 7.83 hertz, give or take. 7.83 hertz. But then you get these harmonics, almost like musical overtones, roughly 14.3 hertz, 20.8, 27.3, 33.8 hertz, and so on. And these correspond to really long waves. Incredibly long. We're talking wavelengths that literally wrap around the Earth, thousands of kilometers long. Okay, so Earth has this natural electromagnetic pulse, super low frequency, sparked by lightning, bouncing around in this Earth ionosphere cavity. Fascinating stuff, but why should we really care? What does this tell us? What's the uh, the point of tracking it? Ah, well, that's where it gets really practical. For one thing, Schumann resonances give us a unique way to monitor global lightning activity, almost in real time. Because lightning is the source? Precisely. More lightning or more intense lightning generally means stronger resonances. Mm -hmm. So by measuring the SR intensity, we can get a sense of how much thunderstorm activity is happening planet-wide. At any given moment, there are like 2,000 thunderstorms happening. So 2,000 constantly. Yep. And the SR signal reflects that collective activity. So it's like a global thunderstorm tracker. Kind of, yeah. And what's really cool is you can see daily patterns. The overall strength of the resonances goes up and down during the day. Oh, like a daily rhythm. Exactly. There are usually three main peaks in intensity. And these line up remarkably well with the times when thunderstorm activity peaks in the big tropical chimneys, Southeast Asia, then Africa than South America. So you can actually see the pulse of global storm activity shift across the planet as it rotates. You absolutely can. It's like listening to the Earth's weather breathe in an electromagnetic sense. That's incredible. You mentioned chimneys. Is there a debate about which one is strongest? Ah, yeah, there is a bit of ongoing discussion there, sometimes called the chimney ranking debate. 
depending on where you measure the resonances from, you might get slightly different pictures of whether, say, Asia or South America is contributing more lightning energy overall. Why the difference? Well, researchers think things like how the ionosphere changes between day and night can affect how the signals travel from those regions. So how conductive it is, its height, that can influence what a detector picks up. It's still being studied. Okay, so it's a dynamic picture. This sounds like more than just weather trivia, though. You mentioned monitoring. Yeah. Does this connect to climate change at all? That's a really exciting area of research right now, the potential link to climate. How so? The core idea is temperature influences lightning. Generally, warmer conditions tend to lead to more frequent, maybe more intense lightning strikes. Okay, makes sense. Warmer air holds more moisture, more energy. Exactly. And the relationship isn't necessarily simple, like one-to-one. -one. It seems to be non-linear, hmm. meaning even a small global temperature increase could lead to a proportionally larger increase in lightning activity. Which would show up in the Schumann resonances. Potentially, yes. Yeah. If that link holds strong, the SR record could become a very sensitive global thermometer, in a way, reflecting shifts in global temperature through lightning activity. Like the Earth's heartbeat indicating a fever. Huh, that's one way to think about it. Yeah. And there's another potential link, too, related to water vapor. Go on. Those big thunderstorms, the deep convective ones that produce lots of lightning, they're also really important for pumping water vapor high up into the atmosphere, the upper troposphere. And water vapor is a key greenhouse gas, right? A very important one. So the idea is if we track long-term changes in Schumann resonances, reflecting changes in these big storm systems. We might also be tracking changes in how much water vapor is getting transported upwards. It's another potential climate signal hidden in the SR data. Wow. It really connects everything, doesn't it? A tiny lightning flash contributes to this planet-wide resonance, which might tell us about global temperature and water vapor. It's yeah, intricate. It really is. The interconnectedness is amazing. And this whole phenomenon, it's not just limited to Earth, is it? I think I read something about looking for these resonances elsewhere. That's absolutely right. The basic ingredients, you know, planetary size cavity, conductive boundaries, some kind of electromagnetic zap, mm -hmm. they aren't necessarily unique to Earth. So other planets, maybe moons too, could have their own version of this. Definitely possible. Scientists have looked at several candidates in our solar system. Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, even Saturn's moon Titan. Okay, what have we found or what do we suspect? Let's start with, say, Venus. Well, data from the old Soviet Venera landers actually detected electromagnetic signals that looked a lot like lightning. And calculations suggest Venus should have detectable Schumann resonances if lightning is happening. And Mars. All that dust. Could there be lightning in dust storms? That's the thinking. There have been some radio signals detected from Earth that might be Martian Schumann resonances, possibly linked to electrical discharges and big dust storms. But we really need measurements from the surface. You know, a lander with the right instruments, to be sure. Future missions, maybe? What about the gas giants? Jupiter and Saturn must have insane lightning. Oh, absolutely. We've seen the flashes optically on both. Jupiter, in particular, is thought to be a strong candidate. There's been at least one study modeling what its Schumann resonances might look like, and they should be detectable, given the intense lightning and its ionosphere. Okay, and Titan. That one sounded really interesting. Something unexpected happened there. Titan is fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, the expectation was... Maybe lightning in its thick atmosphere would drive resonances. Yeah. But the Cassini probe and the Huygens lander didn't find much evidence for lightning, surprisingly. So no resonances then? Well, here's the twist. Huygens did detect a Schumann-like resonance. But it doesn't seem to be driven by lightning. What's causing it? The leading theory now is that it's excited by the interaction between Titan's own ionosphere well, and well. Saturn's powerful magnetic field whipping past it. Wow. And get this the specific properties of that resonance. They provided really strong evidence that Titan has a liquid ocean hidden beneath its icy crust, likely water mixed with ammonia. No way. They figured out there's a subsurface ocean from an electromagnetic resonance. Indirectly, yes. By studying how that resonance behaved, they could infer the presence of a conductive layer, the salty ocean beneath the surface. It's an incredible example of what these signals can potentially reveal. That's mind-blowing. And this whole idea, could we use it to look for lightning, maybe even oceans, on planets around other stars, exoplanets? That's the hope. 
It's a potential tool for exoplanet astronomy. If we could detect similar you know, low-frequency spectral peaks coming from an exoplanet's atmosphere, it could be a sign of lightning. Which tells you something about the atmosphere's composition, its dynamics. Exactly. Even if we can't see the planet clearly, we might be able to detect its electromagnetic heartbeat, so to speak, and learn about its environment. This has been an amazing deep dive. Seriously, we've gone from Earth's own subtle hum generated by lightning, resonating in that huge cavity between the ground and the ionosphere, to seeing how it tracks global storms, how it might even help us monitor climate change, and then jumping off world to Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Titan's hidden ocean. And maybe even distant exoplanets. It's quite a journey for such a faint signal. It really is. Yeah. And it's important to just to quickly mention, while the science is fascinating, you sometimes see claims online about Schumann resonances directly affecting like human health or consciousness. Ah, right. I've seen some of that. Yeah, it's crucial to understand that there's just no solid scientific evidence to back up those kinds of direct biological effects. It's really important to stick to the established science and be wary of misinformation. Good point. Keep it grounded in the physics. Okay, so wrapping this up, here's something to think about. If we can detect these kinds of electromagnetic pulses on other worlds, what else might be hidden in those signals? Could there be other energetic processes, not just lightning, leaving their own signatures in this low frequency hum? What might those tell us? It definitely makes you wonder what else is out there humming away. It really does. And hey, if you listening enjoyed this deep dive into Schumann resonances, please do give us a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and definitely drop a comment below suggesting other topics you'd like us to tackle. We love hearing your ideas. We do. Also, you can find links to some related resources in the show notes. If you happen to make a purchase through those links, it does help support the show and lets us keep doing explorations like this one. Every bit helps. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks so much for tuning in with us today. Stay curious, everyone.